This is day 28 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new six mark question each day so that you can practice how to answer them. You can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also access all of the previous videos via the playlist. Unlike almost every other question that I've written for this series, this one, there's no way you could mistake for an essay question. But that doesn't mean that you can't still lose out on marks because you haven't read the question properly. So make sure before you take your six minutes that you have identified what is necessary in order to get full marks on this question. Now pause the video and have a go at answering it. Now, before we get started, I should probably confirm that no, you're not supposed to have heard of this particular kind of albinism before, and you're not supposed to know how its genetics work. Actually, for the last couple of years, AQA have been pretty good at referring to disorder E or disease X, because they know that giving you the names of diseases you haven't met before tends to freak people out. But there's nothing to stop them from going back to doing that, so I've named it here as well. Now, the first thing I'm going to need to do is to work out from the information they've given me whether this disorder is caused by a recessive allele or a dominant allele. And I can see, looking at the genetic diagram, that person four has got albinism, but his parents both don't have albinism. And so that gives me the information that this is caused by a recessive allele. And therefore, his genotype must be little a, little a. So in terms of filling in my Punnett square, I know that his genotype is little a, little a. And then I need to look at his partner. Well, she must also be carrying the recessive allele because otherwise they wouldn't be able to have offspring who also had albinism. Um, but also she must have the dominant allele too because otherwise she would be a sufferer of this disorder as well. So she must be heterozygous, big A, little a, and I can add those in to my Punnett square as well. Of course, you need to be careful when you're drawing your Punnett square that the internal boxes are going to have the genotypes of the offspring and they will have two letters each, but these external boxes represent the gametes and they only have a single letter in them. So then I can start to fill in the internal boxes. And for GCSE, we're not particularly worried about which way round they are. Um, the standard is that you always put the capital letter first, but you won't be marked down for doing that if you get it wrong at GCSE. So we can fill in our four boxes with our four genotypes. Now, I want to explicitly say that these ones that I have circled are the offspring that have albinism. And the reason it's important to do that is that the question has asked me to do so. And then actually the question doesn't just ask me what proportion of the offspring have albinism, but what are the chances that the child is a girl who has albinism? So the chances that the child has albinism are 50-50 and the chances that it's a girl are also 50%. So the chances that both of those things are true is going to be 50% of 50%, which is 25% or a quarter. Just make sure that when you give your answer, you do so in the form of a percentage or a fraction, or by saying one in four, definitely not one to four, because that would be incorrect. It would imply that there were five offspring and only a 20% chance, and then you wouldn't get the mark. This isn't an extended response question, so it's not level marked. Instead, you're going to receive your six marks for having done six specific things. The first thing that the question asks us to do is to identify the parental genotypes. So if you've said that parent four is homozygous recessive and parent five is heterozygous, that's your first mark. Then your second mark comes from identifying the genotypes of the gametes that are going to make up the permanent square and the third mark for identifying the genotypes of the offspring. Sometimes where you get a cross between two heterozygotes, that might be worth two marks, but here, because it's a simpler cross, we're only getting one. The next thing that we need to do is to indicate which of the offspring from the Punnett square have albinism. So not just the percentage, but which ones specifically. So if you've made some kind of marking to show that it's the homozygous recessive ones, then that's your fourth mark. And then your fifth mark is for specifying that there's 50% of them. And then your final mark is for identifying that because we're also interested in sex, our overall final percentage is going to be 25%, or you could have said one in four instead. Tomorrow's question is an evaluate question taken from the using resources topic of GCSE chemistry. Don't forget, there's a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also the playlist containing all of the previous videos in this series. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow for the next part of the six mark challenge. 
If you have found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Science Revision videos coming soon.